everybody today my topic is how to design a beam for which b and d are not known so first of all i am taking an example of a simply supported beam and a span is 10 meters having superimposed dead load 15 kN per meter service live load 25 kN per meter as well i am taking f prime c as 30 megapascal fy 400 megapascal so as b and d are not known so first of all we have to estimate the h and b say i am taking h in between 8% to 10% so height i can consider 900 mm and width half of the height so it will be say 400 mm this is the height and width so using this height and width easily we can find the weight per meter of this beam because we know the unit weight of concrete so it is very easy to find again using live load and superimposed dead loads we can find the total dead load as we see here it is written dead load self weight plus superimposed dead load so for 1.25 factor it will be multiplied by this total dead load and 1. this is 1.25 this is 1.5 multiplied by live load it is 25 so surely we get this 67.05 kN per meter now here one important points the height i have taken is it within the capacity to waive the deflection computations let's check it because here i have written check the minimum beam depth requirements how using minimum depth for non pre stress beam as per csa a23.3 table 9.2 we can use h minimum ln by 16 so ln it is 10 meter by 16 we got 624 mm height minimum height will be 625 mm but i have taken 900 mm so surely it is less so i can write the preliminary beam depth satisfied the minimum depth requirements and beam deflection computations are not required very important points now as we know the factored load using the factors we can compute the factored moment for this simply supported beam by very easy equation w square by 8 so we get 838 kN meters now we have to compute the dimension of the cross section b and d first of all we need to know the equation for it is called factored moment resistance equation of mr here i have written two equations why because if we look at this i mean equivalent rectangular stress distribution because here i have taken a typical cross section and equivalent rectangular stress distribution as well here there is isometric view of the stress distribution so from this figure it will be very clear for us how we got this all equations this phi c alpha 1 a prime c this is uniform stress comes from the concrete so that's why this concrete stress block and height is a and this is c from the top fiber to the neutral axis 
Now this stress block, we have to find the compressive force. So surely compressive force means this stress multiplied by this area. In this isometric view, area of the stress block is very clear because area is A multiplied by B. So AB. So here I used AB. But I used AB but instead I used beta 1 BC because beta 1 C means A equal to beta 1 C. So we got compressive force. And the tensile force this tensile stress, it is phi S Fy multiplied by area of the steel. Very easy. So once we get these two forces, there is a force couple created at a distance of JD. JD means D minus A by 2. So surely we know it can be, so the moment resistance, factored moment resistance will be CR multiplied by JD or TR multiplied by JD. So that's what it is. One important point, we must consider it is in equilibrium situation. So surely we can write this part equal to this. So once we write this and this equal, so we can write A equal to this equations. And this A means height of the stress, compressive stress block. Now only one important thing we will do, here it is area of the steel, we will replace this area of the steel by using reinforcement ratio equal to AS by BD. So AS we can write rho BD. So once we wrote rho BD, then B and B will be cancelled, so this will be the remaining. So we know now what is A. Now this A we will substitute here, we will get these equations factored moment resistance and another important things i also forgot to tell we are using factored moment resistance actually we are using this to reduce the strength of these two fy and f prime c we want to reduce the strength of these two that's why you use this factored material resistance factor that is why here it is called factored moment resistance now this bigger portion of this equation except bd square we are using a term kr so it's very clear if we put all the values for these parameters we get the value say it is 3 mpa but it is time consumed to put all the parameters. So instead we can, instead of that, what we can, we can convert our equation as this, say kr bd squared 10 to the power minus 6, then mr by kr equal to bd square by 10 to the power 6. If we put the value for mr as per this mf 838 divided by KR. But this KR I can take from here, but I want to show another way taking from the table. Without doing this, without using these calculations, we can get it from the table. Let's see how to do that. And from table means we have to know which concrete strength we have what is the reinforcement ratio so that's why we are assuming rho equal to 1 so if rho equal to 1 if a prime c equal to 30 our value kr will be 3 how it comes let's see this is the table a3 Look at A prime C 20, 25, 30, 40, as well alpha 1, beta 1, rho B, balance uh, failure still ratio is given here, AB by D also given here. So according to the rho, according to the percentage of reinforcement ratio, percentage of steel, 
say this is 0 0.01 as i said we are taking one percent so we are here and our concrete strength is 30 so what comes 30 come down up to this row we find here three even you can generate this table because i use the formula then i generate this table it can be generated by yourself if you want because you have to use this equation here also you can find the value for j using this equation is look at j and we need these two value and we can take it directly from the table so let's see just look at the table again for full table it is up to here this is the table okay now we are coming back to our previous positions okay so rho equal to 1 f prime c 30 already i showed you we got 3.001 say it is 3 so quickly i can write kr equal to 3 already putting the all parameters value we also got 3 so here one important thing is bd square by 10 to the power 6 equal to i rho 279 how it comes mr by kr you know mr we have to use now mf value 838 divided by this 3 so we get this bd square by 10 to the power 6 279 now once we get 279 bd square by 10 to the power 6 how you will be sure that your value for b and d your assumptions for b and d value like 400 by 900 or 400 by 800 it is correct or it is near of this so what you will do bd square by 10 to the power 6 equal to 279 there is another table we are using it is actually bd square by 10 to the power 6 so what i am doing here there is another table i will show you right now but here i have to do some additional things say b equal to 400 h equal to 900 already we had that now still dia i am considering 30 so if i use still dia 30 because i need to find d so d you can find it h minus kava link dia minus bar dia minus one four bar dia by two because i am assuming two layer of steel so this way or quick we can do for one layer near about 30 dia steel then we can write h minus 55 for two layer we can write h minus 90 otherwise you can use exactly this value this equation so you will get the d now if you get d you can find easily bd square by 10 to the power 6 equal to 262 because you know b you know d so bd square divided by 10 to the power 6 is 262 now let's go to the table we want to see these 262 is it coming closer to this or not 400 by 810 262 in the table this one bd square by 10 to the power 6 for using in choosing beam sizes so look at our value is 262 where it is because 400 by 900 it is 324 400 by 800 it is 256 but our value was 262 slight greater than 256 so our depth is 810 and 400 so we can use this table also to get directly the sizes of the beam now here we got it 262 so we are done with this part 
so our beam depth is 810 and width is 400 now what you will do compute the area of the reinforcement if this value is or this value is different once you get this then you can check your self weight and you can revise the mf also but right now we don't need it now let's start with how to find the area of the steel we know the formula this one equation like this rho equal to we are considering 0.01 and j equal to 0.883 this is interesting you can get the j value by using equations or from the table let's see from the table how it comes j value look at j one percent reinforcement ratio 30 concrete strength so our j is what 0.883 right or you can see 0.883 here 0.883 so if we know j.883 we know all other this parameters value then we get steel area 3490 so what we can assume 5 numbers 30 if we take it comes 3500 so this is perfect now one important thing is is this reinforcement area is it less than as minimum or greater than minimum that is very important to check as per csa 23.3 so what you will do we will use this equation as minimum is this so putting the parameters all values we got 986 and it is less so it means our steel is far greater than minimum steel so we are okay with the steel area this is done now one important question is putting this steel like 3500 five pieces of steel is it steel yielding that is important to check so what you will do to get steel yielding we have to check a first and then we have to check whether fs equal to fy is okay or not because fs must be equal to yield stress value alpha 1 we have this formula we can find so once we get alpha 1 phi c b we can find a because here if you put all the values we get this only here three other parameters value also came from other place already it is on this sheet so it came because if i click here all the values are here so we got it a equal to we got now one important thing here i have to tell something if this stress i mean strain distribution this one it is in balanced condition these red lines this one it is in balanced condition what is balanced condition balanced condition it is characterized by simultaneous crushing of concrete and yielding of tension reinforcement so what is happening the strain in the concrete it reaches we can see it here 0.0035 it is the maximum value while the strain in the steel we can see it in the down epsilon s equal to epsilon y this one this yield strain this is steel strain and this is yield strain it means steel reaches stress in the steel reaches the yield strain consequently when this happens consequently we can say the stress in the steel i mean this one fs is equal to yield stress 
stress in the steel is equal to yield stress fs equal to fy this one i mean now if you take this because i have taken here two lines one is this backward of this another is ahead of this so this line actually what this line actually if this red line is the balanced one so this black dotted line i mean this one it is actually showing very clearly because if this is balanced reinforcement ratio this red one so surely this reinforcement ratio is less than balance this one less than balance and epsilon s equal to epsilon y so surely this one epsilon s greater than epsilon y and fs equal to fy it means it already reaches or crosses the crosses the yield stress yield stress because here actually it is showing fs less than fy so here i have written fs equal to fy so what is happening this one a by d beta 1 700 by 700 plus fy Also, from similar triangles, I calculated here similar triangles. If we use and then in this form, what you can do, we know epsilon CU maximum value 0 0.0035. Only one important thing we will do above and below, we will multiply it by modulus of elasticity of steel. Then we get this equation. This is the most important equation. If we want to write in state C B A B, then we have to multiply it by beta 1 because this relation 2 is with beta 1. So we have to put beta 1 also. So this is the most important equation to justify about balance failure. So A B by D equal to beta 1 700 divided by 700. So if our A by D less than this, it means it will be still yielding that's the point still yielding so what you are doing very easy a b by d already it is here and a by d less than this so what i am doing so here we checked it say i wrote here steel strain will exceed 0 0.002 0 0.002 it means 0 0.002 so our strain here, it will be 0 0.0024, 0 0.0025, 0 0.003, whatever comes, but it will be greater than this in this situation. And Fs equal to Fy, it means already yield stress, yield stress. So here Fs equal to Fy. Now, we are now very clear about this point. So once we got this, once we can prove that, another important thing is AB by D, how we can get it. See, look at from this table also we can find AB by D for 30 concrete strength. So our AB by D equal to 0 0.570. We can use this value also. So here 0 0.570. And A by D, what I got A divided by D already we know D 810. So we find it 0.253. So if this is less than this. So we are 100% sure Fs equal to Fy. It means still yielding failure. So we are done with this. And another thing, this AB by D always greater than 0.5. And A by D we must have less than 0.5. That's what it is. Now, so once we get D equal to based on D810, surely we can compute MR. 
we know phi s s f y d a by 2 we can find the mr what is that 842 what is the mf mf is 838 so surely our mr is greater than mf so we are sure that our b equal to 400 millimeter d equal to 810 our steel is 3500 h is 900 millimeter we are now perfect with this so we got the b and h actually this will be this is b and d b and d so i think we are done with this I think that's all for this.